Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a duplicator for your lathe. Well, the lathe duplicator has been on my list of things to make for quite some time, and it's not a difficult project, but just like any other jig, you just have to take your time and do it properly. So there's a lot of ground to cover. Chances are it's going to be a multi-part show for this one. And uh, let's start over at the bench by marking out and laying out the base of our duplicator. Well, the first piece that we're going to start making for this duplicator will be the base. And this will be kind of the auxiliary table that will mount to your lathe. Now, I'm making this for a Delta 46 460 MIDI lathe, but it's completely adjustable for whatever lathe you want. You just have to adjust your measurements. So the piece that I'm going to need, we're going to be using some good quality three quarter inch thick ply and we need a piece here that is going to be 24 inches long and we're going to mark it off at 11 and a half inches wide. So I've now cut the base piece at 24 inches by 11 and a half and you may be wondering how I came up with that. And here we have our lathe. We're measuring from the edge of our headstock here to the end of our lathe and we actually have 24 and 5 sixteenths. But we're going to have the tailstock, etc. I really don't think that 5 16 is going to make a difference. And to give us a little bit of wiggle room, you don't want to jam it tight against your headstock here. So 24 inches will be fine. As far as the 11 and a half, we're going to measure the distance here between the outside edge to outside edge of the ways of our lathe bed. And for mine, it's just over five and a half inches. So, um, or sorry just under five and a half inches at five and seven sixteenths we're going to want a platform to hang out the edge to use the tools of our duplicator so basically eleven and a half inches is absolutely fine that will give us a six inch overhang on the outside of our lathe bed out this way and give us plenty of room with five and a half inches to secure the auxiliary table to our lathe bed. So that's how you come up with the measurements to adjust it for your lathe. We have just a little bit of layout to do here. It will go by fairly quickly, so hopefully you can follow along. This will be the front edge of our duplicator where you will be working here. So you are standing facing this edge just for marking out purposes. We need to mark our line that will be for our mounting holes that will fasten this down to our lathe bed. And for that we need to draw a line at the back of our jig at three inches in from the edge. We will be drilling some counter sunk holes along here a little later but that's the purpose of that line. Now from the front we need to mark our platform that we're going to be working on and that will be five and a half inches from the front edge and that is our working platform. The next line that we're going to want to draw on our jig we'll just adjust it in our hold down here our next line is going to be for the cutout for our headstock and for that we're going to measure in from the left edge we're going to come in at four and a quarter inches. And then from our right side we're going to want to measure in seven and three quarters of an inch. And what that will provide is a 12 inch section here in the middle for us to mount to our lathe bed. I've changed our camera angle a little bit here so that we can get a better view. And this area here is actually going to be cut off or scrap, as is this area over here, just to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what we've got going on. We now want to go around with a circle template 
and we're going to round off all of our inside and outside corners. So here, 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 and here, we will go around and place a one inch diameter circle on each one to give us a nice radius on each one of these inside and outside corners. Now, if you remember, we drew that line three inches in from the back. And what that line coincides with is the dead center between the ways of our lathe bed. So if yours is different, you can adjust that measurement. It's not that big of a deal. We now need to mark our three bolts or the three bolt holes that will fasten it to our bed, uh, our lathe bed. And for that, we're gonna come in an inch and a half from either side, and we're going to leave four and a half inches between holes. So if you have the exact same measurements of, as mine from this edge, we're gonna place a mark at five and three quarters right on that three inch line, at 10 and a quarter right on that three inch line, and once again at 14 and three quarter on that three inch line and those will be your mounting holes and we can center punch those and get them prepped for drilling a little later. And this is pretty much the layout of the base done. So I'm gonna take this over to the scroll saw. I'm gonna very carefully cut along these lines in the inside corners, as well as these outside corners. And once we're done with that, I'm gonna clean up each one on the belt sander, and then I will come back and see you. So with the main base now cut and shaped, I've cut some pieces for filler blocks that we can use at the tailstock. I've just cut them out of scrap and they are all six inches long and they are three, four and five inches wide. So out of your scrap stock, you may want to cut those. We're going to radius each one of the four corners on each of these pieces with a one inch circle template and sand them over at the disc sander the same way we did with the auxiliary table base. We will also place a mark for a hole, the same thing like we did on our base for our mounting hole. That will be three inches in from the back edge, so centered, and as well centered side to side. So inch and a half for the three inch piece, two inches for the four inch piece, and at two and a half inches in on the five inch piece. Well, before we can move on to the cleats that will hold this to the ways of our lathe bed, you're going to need some hardware and for that we're going to need some quarter 20 thread bolts. These are three inches long with a countersink head, some machine screw or machine bolt and we're going to drill our three holes in our main base as well as a countersink that is suitable for the bolt that you're using. As well we're going to drill the holes that we marked in the center of our three spacers so that we can as well be accepting of these three inch bolts. Once we get that done, you can give all of these pieces a good sanding, but don't sand too hard on the ply because you'll wear through it to the next level. It's now time to make the cleats that will hold our auxiliary table to the bed of our lathe. And for that, we need to take a couple of measurements. And the first measurement that you want to take will be the distance between your two ways of your uh, lathe bed. In my case, it's an inch and a quarter. So that will be the width of the piece that we need to go between here. We will also want to measure the thickness of our lathe bed. And you want to make it so that your lathe bed is a little bit, or sorry, that your cleat is a little bit thinner than what your lathe bed is. In my case here, I'm looking at five eighths of an inch for thickness. So as long as I'm less than five eighths of an inch, it will be fine. So let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what it is that I've cut. 
So all I've really done is cut a couple rabbits here in the side of this piece to form our cleat to hold this in place. We've got one and seven eighths of an inch wide. We've got this cleat here measuring across at an inch and a quarter. That'll coincide with the distance between the ways of our lathe bed. This section here, this one lip, is 5 sixteenths of an inch wide on either side. And I've made this section right in the middle at 3 eighths. So 3 eighths and 3 eighths, that's 3 quarters of an inch. And that will be all of the dimensions you need to make this cleat. You're going to need enough for all of the pieces that you've cut. So you'll need one piece at 12 inches for your main bed of the jig. You will need one piece at three inches, one at four, and one at five for your spacers for the tailstock. I have our 12 inch cleat here and we're just gonna lay out our marks to put our threaded inserts that will help us to tighten this to the bed of our lathe. We're going to come in an inch and a half from each end and then we're going to come in another four inches, sorry, a four and a half inches in. So that will bring us to six inches right there. And once we get the, that mark, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, just like this. All we really need to do is get our inch and a half mark and we're going to center it and drill it for some threaded inserts that will coincide with the same thread of the bolts we're using, in this case, quarter 20 thread. We will also do the same thing and put some threaded inserts in both our three, our four, and our five inch pieces for our spacers of the tailstock. And once you get all your threaded inserts in place, it's just a matter of screwing your quarter 20 bolts down through your jig to attach it to the bed of your lathe. But there's still one more piece that we need to install, and that will be a rail that holds our templates. So the last piece for our base or our auxiliary table will be the riser. And the riser is used to keep the template raised up so that we can follow it. I'm just using a piece of maple, and that piece of maple is 5 eighths of an inch thick. It's 12 inches long, which coincides with this length right here, and it is 1 and 3 quarters of an inch wide. And we're just going to line it up with the back edge of our platform here. Once we get it all lined up, I'm going to clamp it in place and then we're going to drill and countersink some number eight by probably inch and a quarter screws, I would think. And we're just going to screw this riser into place on the back of our jig. And we can now take it over and mount it on the lathe. So all I've done is I've slid this into place, aligning our cleat in between our ways of our lathe bed and we're just going to tighten these down and it's rock solid got a great working surface here now we have our riser in place for our template this base is done so we can stop with this leave this on the lathe and we're going to move on to some of the other parts of this jig and unfortunately that would be all the time that we have for this week uh, the time goes quickly on the show when we're having fun. But we've made some great progress on the jig. There's a lot more to come. And we're going to continue with that next week. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the build so far. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me here again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.